All right. Um, this so. Uh, shall I ver wish me two thousand and three? All right. So the so the model works in the following way. You have two companies. Um, I can I can't even write the two correctly. Two firms A and T. Obviously, A represents the acquirer. T represents the target. Right. And here is that how the model works. Right. So A, T. Maybe I'll just skip the N. Right. A and T. So they have some capital. That's the assets they have. Right. K A and K T. Right. And in the short run, short run. The short run value is given by S A K A and S D K T. All right. If they do merge, then obviously they're going to have a combined capital. And the valuation is going to be S K A plus K T, right? So S can be different from S A and S T, right? And typically, um, in order for a merge, typically we're going to assume that the acquirer as is going to be having higher value, right? Higher value. So. What would be the short run gain from merging? Well, that would be just the three terms subtract together, right? S A K A minus plus K T minus S A K A minus S T K T. Right. So for this to actually for for this to, be, to to actually work, if you think about it, right? Um, you need S to be high enough. Otherwise, you're just not going to compensate, right? So S has to be high enough in this case. In this model, we can assume there is actually no gain in long run. Okay. So. Long run, everyone has the same valuation. G. K, G, K, T. And merged it would be G, K, A plus K, T. And so long run gain for merging is zero because the terms cancel out. So the model is set up in a way that in, it's intentional. It intentionally, ass intentionally assume there's no gain in merging. So any merging happening must be due to reasons other than efficiency. And once again, you think about, we're thinking about using cash versus stocks. Cash uses stocks versus stocks. All right. When do you want to use cash? All right. So we're going to assume at the acquirer. So this is A. Pays the target shareholders T. P. K. T. Big or at least as big as the value of the target. All right? So you pay some money, P, per share, essentially. 
What would be the short run effect of this acquisition? Let's say when the when the acquirer announced, okay, I'm gonna pay the target that much money, what would happen? The market would respond by say to, to would respond in the following way. The acquirer and the target. The acquirer is going to become bigger, right? It buys the small company. But it pays a price for that. And the change, the change, so I'm gonna move this further out. The change in value. So this is a this is the value of the merged company. You have to subtract the original value of the acquirer. So This is a change in value, right? For the target, it's going to get TKT minus STKT. Right. So, what about the what about in the long run? In the long run, we know there is no effect. In the long run, we know there is no there is no effect, right? So there is no gains to be made. So now you have GKA plus KT minus the price paid minus what the loan valuation would be. And for the target, it would be just the, oh, sorry, P minus G. All right. So in the long run, is actually if since a lot of things cancel out, this becomes uh, G minus P K T, and for the target, it becomes P minus G K T. Now this makes it very clear that in the long run, it's really a zero sum game, right? In the long run, it's a zero sum game. If the there is only a possibility of overpaying versus and, and underpay under if it's all so, uh, overpaying and underpaying right here, right? Either unless P exactly equals G. Otherwise, the more the acquirer pays, then it's gonna then the the more the, the target is gonna gain in the expense of the acquirer. Right? So in the long run, they could like in the long run, the gain law the gain loss the completely depends on whether there's whether there is overpaying, right? In the sh in the short run though, in the short run though, it could be different, right? In the short run, it depends a it depends a lot on the value a lot on the valuation. A lot depends a lot on the valuation. Uh, we're gonna, so since P is announced, so it depends on SA and S. Now, in a situation where the market doesn't value the company a lot, the acquire a lot, this would that term would be very small, right? This term is very small, so you're subtracting a small term. Then, th so overall, it would, it would be bigger. So. In the short, so in the short run, if the comp if in the short run, if the market doesn't value the acquirer by doesn't if the market doesn't doesn't 
uh, doesn't value the acquirer very highly, very highly, then it, it's actually that it would have a high valuation in the short run, probably moving towards a lower long one, lower long one, lower long one value. All right. Uh, okay, so let's first move on to the stocks first. Because the, mostly this is about comparing whether to use cash and versus whether to use stock. Stock payment. How much do you? How much has to be paid? Once again, you're going to compare. You're going to assume that the payment is going to be this much, right? So the amount needed. Is going to be as same as in cash. But only paid in terms of a fraction of the new company, which would be So paid as a fraction of the ownership of the new company, right? So that would be, uh, we just call that X, okay? X equals to PKT over, right? So in the bottom is the value of the new company and the top is the payment needed. What happens in the short run? Short run for the acquirer and for the target. The acquirer only owns a fraction of the company. The, the remaining terms are the same. And if you break it out, you would realize that the way we formulate it, right? The way we formulate it, really, it comes back down to what we have before. And the target the same. All right, so pretty much using stocks and using bonds, does, using stocks, using, using cash doesn't matter in the short run. I mean, if, it makes a lot of sense, right? I'm buying you now. Well, how much, no matter the method of payment I pay you, you would want the same amount of money now. So it doesn't matter why you, whether I use cash or use stocks. I, if I want to buy you now, I have to pay this much money. So whether you use stocks versus, ball, sorry, whether you use stock versus cash really comes down to the long run effect. Every, and in the long run, The long run is, once again, the acquirer only owns a fraction of the company. Valuation is Q. Right? And 
if you break once again, if you put substitute in the x, you substitute in x, you would get one minus p over s q k t. And for the uh, for the target, and it would be x q k a plus k t minus q k t that equals to p s minus one q k t. Right. Once again, it's a zero sum game. The way that the way is set up. Is just going to be going to be this way. But notice this time around, it's a bit more subtle than that, right? Because now it not does not depend just on p, but it really depends on s, right? It depends on s. Now let's think about what happened. Remember, P is the price per unit of capital, and S is the value is the value is the valuation per unit of capital of the combined company. Now, if S is a lot high, if S is a lot higher than P, if S is a lot higher than P, that means the market was thinking that oh, the merged company is going to work a lot, but um, somehow the price is relatively low. Probably what it means is that merging is great, not merging is bad. So the, the target shareholders are willing to accept a relatively low price in face of a very high synergy, right? Because they, because um, not merging is even is really bad, right? So let's say the market used the market was thinking that merging was going to be great. S is very high versus relative to P. Then what would happen? S high, P small would result in a small number, a small num a small number, small number, and minus one is just um, so this is it's just a make it e making it even smaller. So making it even smaller. So overall, for the target shareholders, it's their the, their payoff in the long run goes down with valuation and for the and for the acquirer it goes up with the valuation so what does since in the sh we have already said? Well, in the short run it doesn't matter. In the short run, if I want to buy you, so what? You, in, what this model assuming would be, people act on short run valuations, right? If people are not looking into long run valuations. In fact, I think that's actually a pretty good assumption because empirical finance research has shown that pretty much all companies return eventually converge. That we know. Over the very long run, they all converge, no matter what type of company you're talking about. But if you ask small, typical small investors, right? I don't think they would know that. That long run valuations are pretty much the same across across the board. So I think this is actually a fine, this is a reasonable assumption that investors in, do not look at long run valuations. Okay. So the, because investors are deciding on short run valuations, so it doesn't matter where you, whether you use cash or bonds in the short run, or cash or stocks in the short run, you have to pay the same amount. But because investors could be wrong in valuations, in the long run, so the short run valuations could be different from the long run valuations. In particular, I already mentioned is that since all companies returns, all companies returns tend to converge, right? So when the companies have high valuation today, you tend you know that it's going to move towards the average, right? It's actually predictable over over the long run, right? So for a for the acquirer, there's a, a lot higher incentive 
to use shares when the evaluation is high in the short run. Right? Then the evaluation is high in the short run. Uh, if you compare the gain in cash, G minus P, K minus K, T, versus stock, right? This is uh, is, uh, is it G or Q? I think I just. I think I switched from G to Q, right? <laughs> it's I supposed to mean it's supposed to mean the same thing. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's G, and somehow I start writing Q. So I should change these all these back to G. These G G. Okay, G G. G G G G. Yeah. Okay. G. All right. So that was a that's a mistake. It's supposed to all to be G. Okay, so this is supposed to be G, right? If you compare the two, right? One is G, my, you have G minus P, K, T. In the other case, you have G minus, you have G minus G over S, P times K, T, right? So the difference is for the acquirer, for the acquirer, Cash versus stock comes down to whether so what G minus whether G minus P is bigger or smaller than G minus G over S over P. So the two terms in the front, right? And then in turn would comes down to whether a comparison between G and S. Right? Comparison between G and S. The bigger is S, the smaller is this. So, so you need, so when is G minus S, sorry, G over S bigger than 1? Well, when G is bigger than S, right? So it comes down to stock is better when so this model comes down to this conclusion is that when the short run valuation is higher than the long run growth the long run valuation then it makes sense to use stock okay I mean, in the economics model, a lot of them is about stating the obvious. So <laughs> it's all all the one want, all the model wants to say is that short run valuation, when short run valuation is higher than long run valuation, then it makes sense for companies to use shares instead of cash to merge. That's it. That's what it says. And the converse, if it's the other way around, they want to use cash. But since companies tend to move towards, since, since we know the company that value, that, that the returns move towards the average in the long run, then this would generate negative return. And so stock mergers would generate negative return for this reason, and cash mergers would generate positive returns. Not because using stocks is bad, but rather the, because, using, because companies use stocks to merge when valuations are high in the short run. Right? The method itself is not a problem. The, what is the timing? Cash um, stock is used when short run valuations are high. Okay? Alright, so that's where we're gonna stop. And that's all the coverage.